Exercise 1.1, question 7. Okay, we need to dissect the whole question. Over here, I have H, North. This is B. Over here, I have A. 5, 7, and 69 degrees. Let's see what other information was given in the question, but not in the diagram. Building A is due east of H. What do we understand by that? Building A is due east of H. So is there anything else that I can indicate inside my diagram? <coughs> Sorry? What? Is there anything that I can indicate in my diagram to show that A is due east of H? What thing? What angle? What angle is that? Yangkun, what angle are you talking about? Bearing of N? For B? Okay, I want you to go and highlight uh, in, your, in your question 7. Um, A is view east of H. What does this mean? Yes, please go ahead. This means, look at the red color, 90 degrees over here. Understand or not? Did you all know this? Did you all know it? Okay, so for the rest of you who didn't know it, now you know it. A is due east of H, H is over here, north, east. Of course, it will be 90 degrees. Okay, so that's what it means. Now, the angles are all given, the distance given. Find the distance and bearing of B from H. What is the reference? H. Okay. So from H, I draw, I put my compass over there. Of course, it's going to point to north. Very nicely given to us in the diagram already. And they want the bearing of B. Okay, B is over here. So join the line. Okay, they did it for us. And I will start from the north anywhere along this arrow go clockwise to reach this line that joins B and H. And this is the angle that I want. Okay? In bearing. So three uh, digits. Not just the bearing, they also want the distance over here. Okay, which one do you want to start with first? You want to start with distance. How do you find the distance then? Okay, distance of, so BH, huh? You want to find the distance first? What is your plan? Cosine rule. You are given, if you've forgotten, which I also told you to go and, re go and revise based on either from the video or your own textbook. Cosine rule. Because you have one side, two sides, and? Included angle, yes. Included angle. The angle is in between the two sides. Once you have two sides and one included angle, confirm, use cosine rule. Let's see what we can do with our cosine rule. So BH squared is equals to B A squared plus H A squared minus 2 times of B A H A cosine the angle that is given to you 69 degrees okay or if I don't do any substitution yet this will be H A B okay, this is without substitution now with substitution I will get 5 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 5 times 7 Cosine 69 degrees. And of course, I will get my value for BH, which is equals to, so I just evaluate 5 square plus 49. So this over here will give me 48.914. I do not round off to 3SF yet. Because I still need one more step, BH. So it's the square root of 48.914. And you get 6.9938. Okay? Yes? Okay, shh. everybody listen to our question because it is important. 
What do you say? A equals to square root or small a. Uh? A equals to cosine a. Okay, this is okay also. Sorry? Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. Like that, right? Okay, this is okay. Because she is very careful, she used small a to represent this side, yeah. which is opposite of capital A. Yeah. However, if somebody did this, a equals to square root of uh, b square plus h square minus whatever, whatever, you will get it wrong. Because over here, a is a point. It is not a length or a line segment. Okay, There is a difference between small h Big H, small a, big A. Okay? So what you did was okay also. So Rabi Atul, did you get uh, 6.99 kilometers? Okay, so yes, that is our distance over here, 6.99 kilometers. Next, we need to find the angle, right? And this is the angle we needed to find. So how? Sine rule. Why should we, why should we use sine rule then? Now that we have three sides, one side, two side, three side, and you have one angle, you can use your sine rule. But which angle do you want to find out? Everybody look at this diagram. Which angle do you want to find out? Um, BHA. BHA. Yes, he's right. Once you manage to find BHA, then you can take 90 minus BHA, and you get an angle in red. So how do we find BHA? Sine rule, right? How do we present our answers? You remember your sine rule goes something like this, sine A over A equals to sine B over B, hang on, equals to sine C over C, right? Yes. The other way of displaying it will be A over sine A equals to B over sine B equals to C over sine C. Now you have two ways that you, want to, you can use. Which one do you want to use? You want to use the one here or this? or anything. It, really, you can use anything, but that I have a preference. If the question asks me if I need to find an angle, I will use number one. Because I have my number, sorry, I have my angle in a numerator. So subsequently, I just need to multiply this side by A, I multiply this side by A, multiply this side by A, and I will get my answer. I don't have to flip my fractions. If the question is asking me for a length, a line segment, I will choose to use number two because all my line segments are already in my numerator. All I need to do subsequently will be multiply by sine A, multiply so on and so forth. I don't need to flip. So it depends on what you want to find. You choose the relevant, the corresponding formula version of your sine rule to use, okay? And of course, in this case, we want to find an angle. I will want to have my angles in my numerator. And I like to put my unknowns on the left. So today, I want to find out angle B, H, A. So I'll start off like this. Sine B, H, A. Divided by what? Five. Okay, if we, if we do all the substitution already, this is what you get. Equals to sine 69 degrees divided by 6.99 or more, 3 8, uh. If you want to be super kiasu, right? You think, oh, 6.99, 3 8, not accurate enough. Oh, then we can try something different. We can write now, 48.914. Oh, this is very kiasu already. Even more accurate, right? Even more accurate will be, you take square root of this whole thing. Uh. Copy this whole thing now. Uh. Uh, then your answer confirm very accurate, but no need to go to the extent. Okay, so I think something like this will be good enough. So subsequently, sine BHA will be equal to 5 sine 69 degrees divided by square root 48.914. Should I evaluate at this step? I don't have to. 
B H A will be equal to sine inverse. 5 sine 69 degrees divided by square root 48.914. Now, use your calculator. Do everything in one step if you are confident of your calculator skills. And you should get a very, uh, quite a, an accurate answer. Okay? Forty one point eight six eight degrees. Rabbi Alto, do you get this for BHA? Yeah. No? No, no, no. The, this is not the final answer yet. Yeah, 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 okay. This is not the final answer yet because I was just finding for, uh, BHA. BHA. This one over here is 41.868. Oh, okay. You did it even more accurately. La. Right. That's what she's saying. Okay, very good. So now that I have this 41.868, what is my varying of B from H now? 90 minus 41.868, isn't it? Because we already said that A is due east of H, meaning A, H, and this angle over here, this angle over here is 90 degrees. So just minus. Lah. So bearing of, what was it? B from H is 90 degrees, or rather 090 minus 41.868, so remember, it has to be in, has to be in three digits, right? So my final answer will be zero four eight point one three one. This is not rounded off yet. Subsequently, zero four eight point one degrees. Right, wrong. Oh, okay. You, you mean you did it this way? Yeah. Okay. This is fine also. N is not a point. Correct, you cannot do that. But I can suggest something to you. If you, you can uh, create a point over here if you want. You can call it something, whatever you like. Maybe you can call it uh, ABCD. Then I can tell. Uh. So D, H, B. Right? Yeah, otherwise how I know what your point is. Okay, so that's for point uh, question seven. You also had questions for question eight, yeah? Uh, find angle H B A. Uh, no. Okay. The bearing of B from H, right? So. H is my reference point. I put my compass over here. This is north, isn't it? Then I join H and B together with one line. From here, clockwise down. This is the angle. Yes. Yes. I'll take the bus. Just now who went to uh, Okay, can I take the bus? No, no, it doesn't matter already. Okay, any more questions for number seven? Hey, now it's not the time to just copy answers. Uh. Do you do your work? Okay, never mind. Uh, corrections, you all submit tomorrow. Huh? Don't want to waste time in class doing all this. Question 8. Two radar stations, C and D, are 4 kilometers apart. C is due north of D. What does that mean now? C is north of D. So again, please highlight this. Because they are trying to tell you something without explicitly telling you. So you need to understand what the question is hinting. So, yeah. You can just treat it as C is north of D. 
It's the same thing. Okay? So this is what we have in the diagram. C. Right, uh, so this is what we have in the diagram. What do you think they are trying to tell us? C is due north of D. Uh, my newer student, Ying Tong, what does this mean? C is due north of D. Huh? D is on top of C. Does it make sense or not? C is on top of D. Okay, let me, let me uh, just... Is the kite on top of the guy? No. Uh. Is it on top of the guy? Okay, so now he changed his words, right? Just like initially he said on top, right? Now he changed it to right on top. No. Like right, right now the kite is above the boy, right? But it's not directly above, isn't it? So in maths, uh, we have to be very precise with what we are saying. Okay? So he chose to say that uh, C is right on top of D. Not exactly true because we are talking about uh, bearing. For example, right now, suppose in front of me is north. Okay, right in front of me is north. Huh? So Zafira is in front of me, right? But we can't say that. We can't say that Zafira is. We say that Zafira is in front of me. She is due north. Okay, not any other direction. Alright? So there's a difference between top, in front, Beside, below, so on and so forth. You must choose the correct words. Huh? So in this case, C is due north of D. What the question is hinting to you is, look at this angle in red. How much is it? 180 degrees. That is what they are trying to tell you. Okay? It is a straight line over here. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, Find the distance BC. BC, question mark here. So how to do this? Sign rule. How? Sign. We want to find a, a length, right? So I will choose to put the length on top. So any suggestions? Sign A, C, B. We got A. No, there's no A in the diagram. Eh? How can it be sign A, C, B? D. Oh, sign D, C, B divided by divided by what? Yeah, you, we need to find more things first, okay? Before we can apply our sign rule. Which is the angle you want to find first? DCB. Okay, angle DCB. How much is that? Okay, so this is 70 degrees. So what if I get this? 70 degrees. Okay, the other angle. Angle CBD is equal to 180 degrees minus 70 degrees minus 38 degrees. Excuse me? 72, sure. Huh? What is the reason? Huh? Angle sum of triangle. Okay? So what if I have 72 degrees here? Don't forget, we are trying to find ang uh, the length of BC. So now we are ready to apply our sign rule. And do we want to put the length on top or the angle at the top? What are we trying to find? Length or angle? Length. Yeah, so to make things easier for us, we put the length on top again. Lah. So, BC over sine what? 38 degrees. Equals to 4 over sine 72 degrees. So, over here, BC equals to 4 sine 38 degrees over sine 72 degrees. Okay, and for the newcomers, I am very particular 
about your degrees? Okay, for the newcomer, I'm very particular about the degrees when I'm using trigonometry. You must have the degrees, otherwise you'll be in another mode, which you can look in your calculator, there's a degree mode, there's a radian mode. We're not dealing with radian mode here. So, must have your degrees, okay? So what did you all get for this answer, BC? 2.5894. So 5 SF, round it off to 2.59. Kilometers. Okay, so that is the distance BC already. Now part B. Shh. Yeah. Uh, the in a triangle, angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals to 180 degrees. Uh, that's why I can take 180 minus 70 minus 38. Okay. Now part B. Find the perpendicular distance from B to CD. You need to identify where is this distance first. This over here is my perpendicular distance from B to CD. Okay, this dotted line. And I need to find this distance right now. So how to how can I do it? Which, what can I use? Not just that lah. 2.59 over here. Over, it is for, okay, yeah, so how? Sine what? Sine 70. Okay, 70 is over here. Equals to? Hey, hey, you're, are you following? Or? Okay, okay. You give you a bit of time, huh? We are trying to find this yellow color distance. It is the perpendicular distance from B to C D, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So how to find this distance? Sign. We don't need to use your sine rule, uh, cosine rule, all those things, because we have a right angle triangle here. We can simply use our trigonometric ratio and uh, this is what we're going to do for part B find DB is it okay Ali says we can find this one and then Yellow one. So you only need at least two steps, right? But there is an easier way. So the easier way is just simply, or oh, let me give this point over here a name. Huh? Uh, apparently A is not used yet. This one over here, I call it point A. Okay, so if you, if you drew your diagram, you can just call it A. Just use it. So um, sine, 70 degrees equals to you must state lah. so in my diagram I state it as A lah. if you don't have diagram yes that is the way to do it yes you cannot suddenly just have an X or an A so either you draw it in the diagram or you do what Rabbi Otto did you state it down let whatever be whatever whatever Okay, so sine 70 degrees equals to AB over 2.5894. And then I can find AB already. Okay, so this will give me 2.4. 332. Okay? So that's it. Check your answer at the back. Alright. Uh, uh, 2.43, correct? Yeah, why? Oh, this one is. 
Who gave me this answer? Ah? Darren. Darren ah? Okay. So somebody is questioning whether your work is correct or not. Let me check. For sine 38 divided by sine 72, 2.5893. Okay. If you want to leave it as 5SF, it is like this. For me, I just chop it off. So I'll chop it off at uh, 5893. Yeah, it's fine. But if you want to put a bracket 5SF, right? Then you must do it like Darren. Nah. Okay? Understand? Nah? Next question, number 10. Okay, again, diagram. This is north. Okay, who in this class looked at this diagram and felt that you can't do it? Just look at it, look at the diagram only, and then you feel like you're not very confident. Okay, it is um, it is natural to feel to have a lack of confidence, but whatever we teach you in class uh, should be sufficient for you to attempt the questions. So all you need is just some time to think. All this thinking are. Uh, Especially when you see something you're not too sure, right? As you think, you will start to learn. If you get the correct answer, you feel good about it. And I need you all to go through this process of thinking and thinking by yourself first. If you don't spend this time thinking and training your brain, during the exams, you'll feel more stressed. So right now, we have time to stress our brains. Use the time and do it. It helps your brain to grow. Mathematics helps us think better, okay? So, uh, let's, let's see. Uh, a ship sails 16 kilometers from A. So, look, from A sails 16 kilometers to B. On a bearing of 301 degrees, sorry, on a bearing of 330 degrees from A to B. So, from A, put a compass over here, this is north, angle 330, the bearing, in this direction. Okay, so you go this direction, 16 kilometers. And he'll end up at point B. Now, he sails 14 kilometers on a bearing of 301 degrees this time. So from here, 301 degrees, change direction towards C. But distance, 14 kilometers. And port D. This is another location. It is due east of C. So if I draw in another arrow, this is 90. That is the hidden information that was not given in your diagram. So what I need you to do is when you get a diagram and a question, make sure every single bit of information is translated into the diagram. So let me show you again. Huh? Over here, this is what I included myself in red. So I expect to see this in your own working also. No, it is not a mask if you can visualize it well enough. But for practice, all these things in red are what I expect to see. Okay, part A. Find the obtuse angle A, B, C. A, B, C. What is obtuse? We know acute. We know obtuse. And reflex. All right? Okay, this one is... Uh, obtuse is between... 90 and 180. So it's bigger than a right angle, but it doesn't go more than 180 degrees. Okay, so we are talking about A, B, C. We're talking about this angle over here for part A. Okay, how do we find this angle? It is not a one step question, huh? Which angle? You, you want to find BA? 
BAD. Okay, let's find BAD first. So BAD will be equal to 360 degrees minus 30, 330 degrees. And we get 30 degrees, yeah? So over here, 30 degrees. Okay, so what? Oh, you mean this is also 30? Okay, yes. So second step, we have... Oh, but how do I call, what do I call this angle? Uh, we can call it theta, or we can give it a name. Let me call this point over here. Let's call it point um, A, B, C, D. Let's call it point E. Okay? So angle E, B, A is also equal to angle B, A, D, which is 30 degrees. This is uh, alternate angles, parallel lines. Okay, now I know that this is 30 degrees. So what? Hundred eighty minus four. Which angle? A B. They realize you need another point, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's call this point over here E F. Let's call this point F. So angle A B F is equal to 180 degrees minus 30 degrees and we get 150 degrees then what's the point? just take 301 minus wait, 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 wait. let me see. Uh, okay I'm getting confused huh the oh the acute the obtuse angle A B C. So I've already got thirty. I want to get. I want to get this angle. It is equal to thirty plus this part. Okay, okay, I see it already. This yellow color angle uh, is equal to thirty plus this part over here, this green color part. And how do I find that? 301 minus 180 degrees. So I don't need this. Okay. Uh, to find a green color angle, angle E B C is equal to 301 minus 180 degrees. Okay, can see this is the green color angle, uh, E B C. It's 121 degrees. So to find the yellow color angle, which is the uh, reef, what was it? Obtuse angle A, B, C. I need to add the green color, which is 1 to 1 plus 30. And then I get the answer real. Why? Okay, take a look at it first, huh? See whether you understand or not. Okay, who needs help at which step? Raise your hand, please. E, B, C, this one. Okay, first, huh? Do you agree that we want to find the yellow color angle? Obtuse is less than 180. Yes, yes, that is obtuse. First, we need to establish. Do you understand what is obtuse? It's between 90 and 180, right? So the angle we need to find will be the yellow color one, isn't it? The yellow color angle is made of two parts. This green color portion and 30 degrees, isn't it? Everybody... Anybody uh, needs help with the red color 30 degrees? No. no uh? So now our task is to find the green color part. Because once we can find it, we add it to 30 and I get the yellow color angle. How to find this green color part? Information given was from here to this point. 301 degrees, right? That is the bearing of C from B. Bearing of C from B is 301 degrees. This part over here. Since that is 301 degrees, and I know that this, this angle over here from F to B to 
to E is 180 degrees, it is a straight line, isn't it? Then it must be 180 degrees. So my green color angle will therefore be 301 minus 180 degrees, which is a straight line. Since they said E is, sorry, um, what did they say? Yes, to find EBC, 301 minus 180 degrees. So you get 121. So now you get a green color angle, you add that to 30, you get 151 degrees. Yes, what's your other method? D, A, B, which is 30, okay? Okay, for which angle? Okay, so 180 minus 30 lah. Okay, then you get 150, and then what do you do? Also 10. Also 10. It's okay as long as you drew the diagram in your working. If you never draw in your uh, working, then I don't know why it's alpha. Then I cannot give it a mark, isn't it? Yeah, end level, if you draw the diagram, you can just list it, label it, and it will refer to your diagram. Yeah, you need to copy the diagram. Huh? Yes, correct. It is interior angle parallel lines. For which angle now? But your alpha is actually my FBA, isn't it? Ah, then it's not alternate angle anymore? Yes? Ah. Ah, not correct. Okay, tell me what you did. I suspect it's the same as Rabiel too. Okay, come, come, Alton. 360 minus 330, you get 30. Okay, this angle here. 180 minus 30. Okay, so, okay, different from Rabel too already. So, oh, wait, wait, maybe still be the same. So, this is 150 then. 3 0 minus 150. Yeah, it's the same as also. So, correct? Uh? So, correct? Uh? Okay, many ways to do it. Uh? Now, who needs for part B? Okay, part B. The distance AC. So, I need to draw a line over here. Myself, oops, very ugly. <laughs> Wait, what are you saying? <laughs> but, which, if they say find the distance AC, of course it is a straight line distance AC. Then it wouldn't be the distance AC anymore. When we say the distance, distance of Evergreen from Causeway Point. So if Evergreen is here, Causeway Point is here, uh, as you find the distance, it will be this distance. We, you wouldn't go and calculate from Evergreen to the swimming pool and then to Causeway Point, right? But this is it. It is always like this. So in mathematics, if we say find the distance, let's say uh, this one, uh, A, B, C, and D. Okay, three, four, three, four. Find the distance BD. What will you do? Hey, you draw a line. Uh. Yeah, of course, correct. So this will be equal to three square plus four square, five. Okay? Okay, okay, okay. Part B. A, C. How to find it? Cosine rule. We have again two sides plus an included angle. So A, C square equals to B, C square plus B, A square minus 2, B, C, B, A cosine the yellow color angle, which is 151 degrees. So AC equals to square root, then you get an answer, and then you round it off, 3SF. Okay, go and do it yourself. 
the part C, the bearing of C from A. Bearing of C from A. So what is our reference? A. Where do we put a compass? We put it at A. Then we draw a line connecting C and A, and we go clockwise. So right now, I will use um, well, running our colors. Let's use blue color. This is now the angle I need to find. This is for part C. Okay, you must identify the angle first, then you can solve, right? So how? I know that from here to this point is 330 degrees. To find the blue angle, all I need to do is to just subtract this part, right? If I can subtract that, I will get my answer. That is my planning. So now how to find this little angle over here? Sign rule. Oh. Uh. Uh. Okay. I want to find this purple color angle. And uh, suggestion was to use sign rule. So let me just do it over here. Part C. Using my sign rule, I want to find the angle, right? So I put an angle at the top. Sign, what is the angle? B, A, C. Divided by 14. This equals to, which other angle do you want to use? The yellow color one. 151 uh. one degrees divided by the length of A, C, which we have found out to be, what should you all get for A, C? Yeah, I don't know. This one is Darren's answer. Huh? How much is it? 29.01. Hello, what is it? Darren, 5 SF, how much? 01? 049. My hearing not very good. Huh? Oh, sorry. Okay, so now I can find angle BAC, the purple color angle. So B A C will be equal to sine inverse 14 sine 151 over 29.049 degrees. Oh, sorry, no, no degrees. Okay. Once I get the purple color angle, therefore for part C, bearing is equal to 330 degrees minus B A C. Get something, round it off yourself. Okay? Yes. Go ahead. And then to find the distance AD. Okay, this one too easy already. Go ahead, do it yourself. AD, just use trigo ratio. Go ahead, try yourself. Maybe I give you one more clue, huh? You go home and copy. So we already have angle D A C, which we can find out. This angle you have already. The length C A you also have it. So definitely you can find the length of A D. Okay, next one, question 14. Here we have a piece of land, A, B, C, D. B is east of A, D is north of A. So go ahead and fill in all the angles itself. Okay. Okay, come, let's fill in the information. B is east of A. So in red color, this is what I expect to see. What else? D is north of A. So this one also 90 degrees. Huh? Okay, D is north of A, 90 degrees. Shown already. Find the length of BD. Who needs help with this? BD. Yeah, it's just the hypotenuse. So B, D, 
equals to square root of 16 square plus 30 square. That will give me 34 kilometers, right? Kilometers or meters? Yeah. Meters. So that's part A, 34. Easy. Part B, angle A, B, C. A, B, C. How? Oh. How to find this red color angle? Starting to get a bit more difficult. Hmm? How, how do we do this? Probably we can separate into two different angles, right? Do we already have two separated angles? Okay, one over here and one over here. They all combine to give me the angle A, B, C. Which one is easier to find? A, B, D, yes, okay. So what should we use to find A, B, D? Yep, tangent A, B, D is equal to 16 over 30. So A, B, D equals to tangent inverse 16 over 30. Do I want to evaluate it yet? No, I don't want to evaluate it yet. Because I don't want to write so many decimal points. So now that I have A, B, D, I next, I'll need to find D, B, C. How to find that? We use cosine rule. Because cosine rule can be used when you have three sides of a triangle. So uh, we can state the cosine rule. So over here, after substitution, it will become 20 square equals to 34 square plus 26 square minus 2 times of 34 times 26 cosine D, B, C. Yeah, uh, the other way, right? Because I like to just mem I like to memorize as few things as possible. I'm confident in my manipulation. So right now I will manipulate and I will get cosine D B C is equals to 34 square plus 26 square minus 20 square divided by 2 times of 34 times 26. This is what you meant? Yeah. So you can either use this straight away. That means you memorize two versions of your cosine rule. Oh, you never memorize that? Huh? Oh, okay. So it's already your mind. Huh? Oh, okay. oh, but anyway, uh, during the exam, you can quote this, meaning you need to memorize. Or if you just memorize one version, you derive the other one. Okay? So, D, B, C is equal to cosine inverse this big chunk over here, put it down, and we have angle A, B, C equals to angle D, B, C plus angle A, B, D. Just substitute in the values to get the answer. Next, bearing of C from B. So from B, this is my reference, right? Draw my north. Parallel to the other north that was given in the question. And I need to find the angle the, from C, C to B. Yeah? So I join one line. I start from the arrow. And I stop here. This is the angle I need to find. Since I already have angle A, B, C in the previous part of the question, it, my job to find bearing of C from B is quite easy. Part C, bearing will be equal to angle A, B, C. This was in part B of the question. Plus what? How do I find this red color angle? Bearing of C from B. Plus how much? Uh, what plus the previous answer? 270, yes. Because from here, from here until here, this is three quarters of a full circle. So that would be 270. So ABC plus 270. Okay, hang on, hang on. ABC plus 270 degrees will give you the answer for bearing. Okay? So, Alfred, you understand what's happening? 
please guide her for me, thank you. <laughs> okay, okay, Poe, which part do you need help with? 270. Uh, all this okay? A, B, C? Part B of the question. Were you okay with it? Okay, then now the bearing of C from B. First, you need to understand whether. Do you understand that uh, this red color angle is the angle that is required? Okay, then this red color angle uh, is. You can break it down into different parts. Okay, one way to break it down will be since earlier on in part B, I already had ABC, right? This ABC, uh? How much is it? Uh? How much do you get for ABC? ABC, angle ABC, part B. 64.0. Okay, 63.98, that one more accurate. Huh? Now, uh, Poe, this red color angle is divided into two parts. The purple color part and... Let me show you the other part. Can you see the yellow color? Over here. This yellow color plus purple, doesn't that give you the red color? It does, right? So how much is the yellow color? Two seven zero. Yes, it is two seven zero. Because for our north, south, east, west, uh, they are all ninety degrees apart. So ninety times two hundred eighty, hundred uh, ninety times three is two hundred seventy. And then after that, you go back one full circle to three hundred sixty or zero degrees. So this is why we have the bearing as. ABC plus 270 degrees. So you get an answer and you round it off. Okay? Then uh, area of ABCD. Do you need help with this? Who needs help? ABCD area? No need, huh? Okay. So I expect to see all the corrections in by tomorrow. Huh? Okay? Now let's move on to the next part, next topic. Wow, we took quite long, huh? Angles of elevation and depression. We are now on 1.2. Okay. Class, class. Shh. New topic already. Um, let's relate this to something that we are, we do almost every day in school. Huh? What? In the morning, you go to the parade square, right? Okay, okay. Most of the mornings. Most of the mornings, we go to the parade square. And what is the ceremony that happens? The flag raising ceremony. So, uh, what, how should we behave during the flag raising ceremony? Silence. So, okay, the correct answer is, we look at the flag. But at the beginning, when the national anthem plays, where is the flag? At the bottom right. Okay, maybe at the shoulder. Lah. So when you look, depending on your height, depending on the prefect's height, sometimes you will be at the start, lah. sometimes you will be looking slightly up, sometimes you will be looking down, sometimes you will be looking straight. So as the national anthem plays, what happens to the flag? It rises, right? What, what should you look at then? Still looking at the flag, right? So, for most of us, we will have to tilt our head a little bit, isn't it? So we follow it up. So, can you imagine an angle? Your head is moving through an angle, right? Originally, you are looking straight, then it goes up, right? There's an angle between, between your eye level and this, what we call the horizon, the horizontal. Okay, directly in front, parallel to the ground. Then we go upwards. This angle that we switch to is called the angle of elevation. Okay? Does the angle of elevation change when the flag rises up? Yes, yes 
right. So uh, if I were to draw it out, okay, no, we don't have to draw it out. Look at your textbook, page 12. You see the diagram? You see the lighthouse? So imagine, okay, and then we have this dotted line called a horizontal. So imagine if you are at a lighthouse and your eyes are over here, then there is a plane. Okay? And we look at the plane. Kind of like us standing at attention in a very square and we look at the flag, right? So we have this line, this dotted line called the horizontal. It is parallel to the ground. Then we look up at the plane. You see an angle being formed? Whether I draw the arrow here, whether I draw the arrow here, whether I draw the arrow here, it's the same angle. Okay. Now this angle will be called the angle of elevation. Very important. Okay, it is from the horizontal to wherever you are looking at. Okay, this term will be used frequently. So, if everybody were to stand up right now, then you look at the flag. Okay, do you all have the same angle of elevation? Who has the greatest angle of elevation? Shortest? Uh, then who has the least angle of elevation? Uh, Everyone has the least angle of elevation, right? That might not be true, you know. What else does it depend on? Right? It does depend on that, right? Afran, can you please come over? Yeah, yeah, come over, come over. Just do a quick demonstration. Uh. Okay. Um, who's taller? Him or me? He's taller, right? So, by right, if we both look at the flag, his angle of elevation should be smaller than mine, isn't it? But I can, okay, come on, let's stand at the flag. Let's look at the flag. So, look, I'll look at the flag. So, his angle of elevation is smaller than mine, isn't it? But I can make it such that my angle of elevation is even smaller. So if you were to look at a high-rise building, for example, you go to Suntec, and you go to City Hall, then you see all the tall hotels, right? You don't look at the front of the hotel, without straining your neck, where should you stand? Stand on the way, If you like to strain your neck, where do you stand? Right in front, So during the flag raising ceremony, who has, who doesn't have to uh, raise the neck a lot? All the people at the back, right? Specifically, the tallest student at the back. person raising the flag. The person raising the flag has to strain the neck the most because I had to go almost 90 degrees up to look at it. Okay? So that is our angle of elevation. Now I need you all to remember this huh? and repeat after me. It is from the horizontal. Okay, one, one, two, three. It is from the horizontal. horizontal. And all of us, we have different horizontals because our heights are all different. Our eye level are all different. My horizontal is over here. Irvine's horizontal is a bit higher than mine. But they are all parallel to the ground. Okay? And our uh, weight house horizontal will be uh, lower than mine. Okay? <laughs> it's not here, that's why I can use it as an example. Okay, now, so it is from the horizontal. Okay? Because the next thing I'm going to talk about is the angle of depression. Now, this is the lighthouse. So the C, this is the C or the ground. It is parallel to the horizontal, isn't it? It must be parallel. Lah. So if I have a ship over here, then I look down at the ship. Change already, huh? Now we look down at the ship. Over here, I'll form an angle again. This angle is known as the angle of depression. Okay, like on the floor, uh, the, the word depression, if there's a hole in the floor, we call it a depression in the floor. So 
is always downwards. Okay? Angle of depression. From the lighthouse, we look at the ship. From the horizontal again. All right, plus. Angle of depression from the? From what? Horizontal again. It is always from the horizontal downwards for angle of depression. Angle of elevation will be from horizontal upwards. Okay? They all start from the horizontal. That's, that's all that we need to know for this chapter, for this topic. Angle of elevation, angle of depression. As long as you know what to look out for, as long as you can identify the angle, all the working is the same already. We learned all of Trigo in the past. All the basics are done. Okay, so let's take a look at example five. This is a simple chapter, sorry, a simple topic. Example five. We have a point on the ground. This is point A. This person looking at the top. And over here, 39 degrees, 100 B T. The angle of elevation of the top of the building from A is 39 degrees. This is the top of the building. So where is the person's eye? Where is the eye? Darren, where is the person's eye? Darren, where is the person's eye? In this question. Where is the person's eye in this question? A. So can you imagine what he's doing? Like he's lying down on the floor and then trying to look at the building. Very strange. But to make things simple, let's pretend that his eye is really on the floor. Okay? Then he looks out at T. Find the height of the building. What should we do? Tangent. We have a right angle over here. So tangent, 39 degrees, equals to opposite, which is BT over AB. So BT will be equal to 100 tangent 39 degrees. Get your answer, round it off to 1 dp. Oh, sorry, 3 sf. Easy or not? Huh? You want to use half of the news? Do you have a question? Okay, then that's it for example 5. They, they can make it more complicated if they want to. Okay, so let us try it five right now. Very simple. Two minutes. Do it. <coughs> try it five. Two minutes, huh? Ali, finish right now. Finish right now. Don't waste time, huh? Okay, for try it five, we can simplify the diagram to simply a right angle triangle. 21 degrees. And we want to find the length of TQ. So from a scenario that was given, we simplify into our diagrams. Now TQ, meaning the height of the tree, we can find it using, is it tangent again? Tangent. TQ tangent 41 degrees equals to TQ over PQ. 
and PQ is equals to 5. So TQ equals to 5, tangent 41 degrees. Get an answer, round it off, 3SF. Okay? Okay, next, example 6. Hey, by the way, can you all think of any examples in real life huh, where you uh, experience an angle of depression? I mean, I gave you an example, right? Your flag raising is angle of elevation, right? Uh, look at your feet. What else? Huh? Then, when you look at Alpha, you should be an angle of elevation. No, you're not taller than him. Yeah, yeah, when Afran looks at almost everybody, it's an angle of depression really, right? Or like uh, during our national day. During our national day celebration, where do you all stand? Uh, you all stand up very square. Last year, eh? Uh, still very square. Uh, sec 2, eh? Sec 1? Okay, no, anyway, some of them were at level 2, right? Then you were, some, of them, some of the students were standing around at the corridors, level 2, looking down, right? So there is an example of angle of depression. So they look down on something, okay? Uh, and in our example number six, we have a vertical cliff. A, C. And this is 50 meters above the sea level. Angle of depression B. Angle of depression is 46 degrees. How far is the boat from the cliff? Now, uh, over here is a very fatal trap that... Mm, uh, you listen to this one first. Over here is a very fatal trap that most students will fall into if the diagram is not given to you. Okay? Based on the question, what did the question say? Angle of depression is 46 degrees. If the diagram is not given to you, do you know where students are going gonna, are gonna to write the... are going to label the angle? They will label it over here. 46 degrees. Now, if you do this, angle of depression is 46 degrees, then it is right or wrong? Wrong. wrong. You say it is wrong. Is it because you fully understand angle of depression or because the diagram shows it is not like that? Okay, let's re remember what I told you to repeat after me. Yes. The angle of depression is from the from the horizontal. So, from A, I need to draw my horizontal first. And the horizontal is parallel to the sea level or ground level. So from the horizontal to the boat, this is my angle. Show me, you can go now. Okay? Listen, Ali. Yeah. This over here, 46 degrees, is my angle of depression. Okay? Always from the horizontal. Don't anyhow go and label. It's very tempting to go and label it wrongly. Sometimes if I'm not careful, I may do it wrongly also. Okay, so how far is the boat from the cliff? What is this value, BC? What should we use now? How, how to find out? 90 degrees minus 46. Why do you want to do that? Okay, BAC. So over here, 90 minus 46, you will get 44 degrees. Okay, how do you know that they add up to 90 degrees anyway? Because there is a right angle over here. Do you all realize that? Okay, very good. Uh, so since this is 44, then what should I use next? Tangent again. Uh? Sign, sign what? Wait, wait, Ali wants to use sign, right? Sign what? Sign rule, okay, come. Angle A, B, C. No, give you a chance. Listen to what he's thinking about. Find A, B, C. Okay, what is the angle? 46 degrees. Then what? Sign 46, why? Oh, oh, sign 46. I bet. Oh, okay. Then B, C equals to 50 sine 44 degrees over sine 46 degrees. Yes, you can do that. But there is an easier way. 
right? We just use tangent again. Tangent. Uh, either you can use tangent 44 degrees equals to BC over 50, and then you get an answer of BC equals to 50 tangent 44 degrees. Or we can do it another way. Since this is 46, this must also be 46 degrees, right? Because they are alternate angles, right? Alternate angles, parallel lines. These two are parallel, they are all horizontals. So then tangent 46 degrees equals to 50 over BC. So BC equals to 50 over tangent 46 degrees. Over here, I have one method, two methods, three methods. They should all give you the same answer. Okay? Okay, now try six yourself. Okay, done? Okay, you should be done by now. So what did y'all get for the answer? Try it. Six. Answer? 90? 95.3. Everybody got that? Okay. So this is correct. Anybody needs me to go through? No. Okay, then let's go on to example number seven. Okay, example number seven, A, B is a vertical observatory tower. From the top of A, the angle of depression of a car due west of the tower is 54 degrees. Do you understand what that means? Not? So, look at, look at it again. Huh? The, the car is due west of the tower. Is it shown in the diagram? The car is west of the tower? Then, uh, Irfan, do you think A is north of B? So we know that C is west of the tower, isn't it? And it looks like it from the diagram, but is A north of B? Who thinks A is north of B? Raise your hand. Who thinks A is not north of B? Is A north of B? Is 
Okay, I, I hope you all are thinking, huh? Because the question says that C is west of B, right? Then from the diagram, it looks like it. Yeah, it looks like it is. So my question is, is A north of B? A, yeah, I found got it correct. Right? A, B is a tower, right? So is A north of B? No, A is, A is on top of B. You get the difference between north and on top? So, so you're, okay, okay. Let me let me try again. Let me try with uh, for example, this one over here. This represents a tower, okay? This is a tower, very small tower. So I take out a compasses, a, a, sorry, a pair of a compass, and it points that north is, for example, in this direction. The north is over there. Then west is over here, right? So maybe the the car is over here. Where is the where is point B? In my setup, where is point B? Uh, below, below, right? Over here, right? Yeah. Where is A? A is here. A is up here. So is A north of B? Uh, no, north of B, that side. <laughs> so you get a you get an idea. You get the difference already. There's a difference between on top and north. So in this diagram over here that is shown to you. You have to be sure, you have to be very clear that it is not a bearing, it's not exactly a bearing diagram. Because in our bearing diagram, whatever we put in front, we usually call it north, isn't it? But in this case, uh, it is like from the side view already. Okay, our diagram in uh, example 7 is the side view. Okay? So, let's, so we got that part out of the way already. The angle of depression of a car is 54 degrees. So let me draw the vertical tower. This is the flat ground. And the car is over here. This is A. And this angle is 54 degrees. Okay. And the angle of depression of car D, another car, due east is. 28 degrees, always from the horizon, horizontal. Then we go down. Over here we have 100 meters. Find the length of AC. So how do we find AC? Any idea how we can find AC? Let me just highlight it for you. Find C. A, B, or oh, I didn't label B. Huh? So we can easily find C, A, B. Angle C, A, B equals to 90 degrees minus 54 degrees. And we get 36 degrees, right? This is 36 degrees. So what if I have that now? How am I going to find the length of A, C? Find what? C, B, find this line. Is it? How to find this line? You all suggest that you must have an, must have more working for me. Ah. How? Sign 28. Everybody, please think. Which side do you want to find first? C A D. Can we find C A D first? Yes, we can find C A D. So, angle C A D is equal to one hundred eighty degrees minus fifty four degrees minus twenty eight degrees. Right? How much is that? Minus 54, minus, oh, okay, that's your question. 98 degrees, okay, so what if I get this as 98 degrees? So what if I have that as 98 degrees? I still cannot find my green color length. Hmm? 
more steps required. What are the intermediate steps? Any other angles that I can find? Just now we already found this one, right? 36. Alternate angles, where? Oh, this one, 54 degrees. Yeah, there are alternate angles. Any more? Eh? This is my Z. Yes, over here, 28 also. So what now? We can use the sign rule. Okay, this one is now irrelevant, right? All this is irrelevant, right? I can now use my sign rule to find the green color length. Then I have one angle over here already. Then I have one angle here and a length over here. So, um, so not required. AC, ACB, yes, it is 54, but I don't need it for this part of the question. Didn't they? Let's look, uh, uh, from the top of A, look at your question, Rabi Alto. From the top of A, the angle of depression of a car is 54 degrees. Since they say angle of depression, then it must be from the horizontal. No, no, it must be parallel to the ground. So this is also 54. Now applying our sine rule to find AC over sine 28 degrees. So you go and state the reason why 28 degrees yourself. Huh? Is equals to 100 divided by sine 98 degrees. So therefore AC equals to whatever it is. Okay. Once you manage to find AC, which is uh, 47.4 meters round off. We can proceed to find the height of the tower using very simple trigo, isn't it? We just concentrate on this triangle. Right angle triangle. The angle is 54 degrees. I have the hypotenuse. To find the height of the tower, we just need the ratio opposite and hypotenuse. That will be our sine. Sine 54 degrees equals to opposite over hypotenuse. Then you get the vertical height AB. Okay? Any questions? If not, then you should be able to do try it 7 and try it 8 by yourself. Go ahead and do it at home in your free time. Let me tell you the homework for today. Exercise 1.2, question 8, 9, 12, 13. One, four questions. Do you... Wednesday. So on Wednesday, bring your work here. We go through the questions that you need help with. Then we proceed on with the lesson. What is due tomorrow? Yeah, the corrections. Oh, I want to see everything done properly. Your, it is your N-level year already. So please take your homework seriously. Now, remaining eight minutes. I want you to look at a diagram that I have. Okay, have you ever seen something like this before? Uh, national Day, yes. So our theme, you, if you realize, it's all about National Day, la, flags, la, this and that. Okay, so over here, I tried to uh, simplify the diagram, simplify the diagram, the scenario of what happens at the floating platform. So you know, people, they gather at the floating platform, then they watch the fly pass, right? So over here, you know what this is? 
which helicopter lah. It's a no, it's not Apache. It's a Chinook. Okay, Apache is the one that can. Apache is the one that can shoot missiles. This one, this one cannot shoot missiles. This one carry things. Huh? Yeah, it carries cargo. Yes. So this one is a Chinook. It carries our state flag. During the national day, hey, shh. during the national day, we have a flag attached to the Chinook, and then it flies in this manner, right? But does it fly directly over the people at the floating platform? Yeah, it doesn't fly directly over. It flies kind of somewhere in front at the top, right? Then from the right to the left. Is there a difference in the angle of elevation? If you were to stand maybe here versus here versus here when the helicopter is over here. Is there a difference? In angle of elevation. So assuming the people all same height on who has the greatest angle of elevation? Whether it's at Z, Y, or X, what do you think? Greatest angle of elevation. X, Y, or Z? X? We are looking at A, I said already. So, looking at uh, this helicopter over here, X, Y, or Z has greatest of angle of elevation? X, Y, the one nearest, isn't it? Okay. Now, where do you think the angle of elevation is? Angle of elevation is from the horizontal, then you look up, right? So where is the horizontal now? Where is the horizontal? Somewhere above X? No, horizontal. The horizontal must be parallel to the C, isn't it? Okay. You go and think about it. Huh? Whether it is X, Y, or Z, they each have their own horizontals. But um, being logical people, people being people who have lived for 15 years already, you have an idea of what angle of elevation is. That is why you are able to tell me that, hey, if you stand at X, the angle of elevation is the greatest for looking at A. So which one has the smallest angle of elevation? Z. Lah. Because it is further away from the helicopter is compared to X, right? Okay, what if the helicopter moves to this point, point B, still standing at X, Y, and Z? Who has the greatest angle of elevation now? Why? 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 Do you remember the experiment I did with Irfan just now? Why is it that his angle of elevation was the greatest? Closest, that is the keyword. Closer, the closer you are, the greater the angle of elevation. So Y has the shortest distance to B, right? And where is this distance? Where is the distance from Y to B? Is it the, okay. The, okay, the shortest distance will therefore be Y directly to B. Lah. But on the horizontal, it will be this distance, right? Whereas if you are at X, on the horizontal, the distance will be this way, which is further. And if you are at Z, the horizontal distance is this way. Get it? And finally, when the helicopter moves to point C, which point will you have the greatest angle of elevation? Is it Y or Z or X? Greatest angle of elevation. Very hard to tell because I need to know this distance first. And then I need to compare with this distance. Whichever has the shortest distance means the angle of elevation is the greatest, isn't it? Do you think so? So uh, obviously X is the furthest away. So it has the smallest angle of elevation. So now my next question is, if you are standing at, for example, choose one that you like, X, Y, or Z, because your tickets are different. Huh? Whether it is an X, Y, or Z, as the state flag flies past, does your angle of elevation change? As you stand at either X, Y, or Z, choose one and you send them. Then the helicopter flies across, right? I know definitely the bearing change because I need to turn one from right to left. Definitely the bearing will change. But does your angle of elevation change? That is a question you need to think about, okay? Oh no, we 
a suit that has a helicopter doesn't move up and down. It is level also. Okay? So uh, that is your task for today. Go and think about whether your angle of elevation will change. And one way to uh, experience this, okay, if you take a bus, then you look at an, an object in the distance. As the bus moves, and you keep staring at the same point. So instead of the helicopter moving, now you are the one moving. Huh? Does your angle of elevation change? You try and experience it yourself. Huh? On the bus, look at something, keep your eye on it. As you move, does your angle of elevation change? Okay. So all the homework, uh, I've already told you what is expected.